Finance Committee meeting of Monday, July 10th, 2017. 7 p.m. So before we get started, I'd like to make some formal introductions. Um, first of all, some of you, some I know, Brittany, Brittany Kinder, she was our, what were you? Business Services Coordinator. <laughs> she was our Business Services Coordinator. She is going to be our Interim Business Manager. Um, she's recently completed her CSBO, uh, which gives her her license. She's still going to pass the test. Um, but she's going to take on much more responsibility now that Tom is gone. So she's kind of going to be the hub of our organization um, in the financial world. And then we're lucky to have with us two veterans that we brought out of retirement, Steve Reiner. Um, Steve's got a long history in the financial world, some experience with Plainfield, District 230. Most recently did some uh, interim positions at Lincoln Way and Lions Lines, Element, uh, Elementary, and uh, David Sellers. Uh, David has spent time at Joliet, Morton, and retired from Lyons Township and has done a couple of interim gigs that I don't remember right now. <laughs> just one? Just one? For a while. Three years at Riverside, 96. Okay. So we're lucky to have them, so we figure... Um, and we're lucky to be here as well. For, <laughs> for one year, we'll get... Uh, We'll get three people to fill Tom's shoes. Um, our board members, Evelyn Gleason. Met them in the office. Uh, Leslie Jones, Christine Ressler, and Kim Campbell. Welcome. Well, thank you. Nice, thank you. nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you as well. Nice to be here. Uh, which one of you is the musician? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love music. You too. You too. If you look at my resume, I actually put in there one of my interests was music. So. You like music? But I have no musical talent. Okay. Zero. None. Well, that helps with the and My, my family tells me to stop singing, singing too. Yeah. They say, please stop singing. <laughs> I sing with the Joliet Junior College Chorale. Oh, nice. And I'm studying piano with a woman who has a bachelor's, master's, and doctorate in piano performance. Oh, oh nice. nice. So, I, I struggle, but yes, I do qualify okay. as a musician. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you a music musician? Yes, I am. In what capacity? Um, I have a minor in music and I play performance. I play sax and um, I dabble with uh, piano and guitar. Oh. Okay. I play the radio. <laughs> 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 All right, Brett, you're up. Good luck. Oh, Thanks. <laughs> Should we still need to call, we'll call the meeting call. to order? Everybody is here, including Mrs. Campworth as a guest. And okay. Um, third business? Mm -hmm. yeah, there we go. All right, on to new business. Bill kind of took care of that. We were talking about doing oh, yeah, the introduction, so, on the agenda, you know, so. first one, go in order. Um, so, July bills. Did anyone any questions? Any questions? No? We're good. We went through. Okay. And impressed deposits? Any questions on any of that? And then we had our CDS payables. Any questions on that? Oh, you guys are being so nice. <laughs> yeah. How long, we just stay on as the administrator for them. There isn't a term or anything. Or well, have we renewed? Or? The option is um, we rotate the officers, and nobody wants this part. And they really don't want to be president. So. Oh, I see. Okay, we're, we're saving so. your dollar. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Did, I'm sorry. What? The CDS were the administrator for the career development. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we always had their bills. Okay. Or yes, or their bills. Carol Brooks. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very good. Um, so we do have a summary attached for our 2017-2018 tentative budget. This is all completely just what we have right now. It's all subject to change and it will look different when we have it finalized in September. Um, also with the 
way the state is right now, it's been so crazy trying to guess what it's going to be. So the way things are right now, this is kind of our best guess at what we have for the time being, but it's definitely all subject to change. So how does this compare to the tentative budget that we, didn't we approve a tentative budget before the school year ended? You guys approved the operating budget, okay. which basically set the budget to 50% of FY17. This allows for supervisors to start ordering textbooks and supplies and materials. So that's the operating budget. This is the tentative budget. We've started collecting budget documents from all of the supervisors in the buildings and started inputting the numbers that we think it's going to be. So all of our operating expenditures are pretty accurate, but Again, with the revenues, we can't say for sure you know, right now, especially because we are still owed quite a bit of money from the state. So it's kind of all up in the air on whether or not we're going to get that and what we're going to get next year as well. Have they provided like a time frame, like when we'll get any sort of idea or like know when? From the state? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the last I saw, the last posting for some of our mandated categoricals was like June 20th, June 23rd. So nothing has really been posted since the middle of June. Um, it's and kind of... beyond the end of the fiscal year. Right, right yeah. Right. Now we are officially <coughs> in FY18. They, they just call that a yeah. wash. Uh, I, I, I talked to Will Davis and he says, it's, well, we're gra grateful that we got it. It's just, not, right now it's not... Don't count anything yeah, right now. Yeah, just don't count yeah. anything. Your financial statements are about that full, so... It'll be reflected in your FY17 financial statements. Whatever revenues are accrued. For the audit. Yeah. Okay. For the audit. The other thing is not everything has been posted from the treasurer's office. So our treasurer's office, you know, posts all of our revenues and um, not everything has been posted and we are not officially closed out for FY17, which is why if you look at our budget summary sheet. We do have a negative in the opening fund balance, but that's not accurate. Um, and we will be doing a transfer to to move some funds around. So it won't be negative and it won't be zero, um, but that's just kind of what we put in to put together like a little summary and kind of get the process going. So right. what was the negative? Was it a buffer for, well, what was the negative? The negative was, Unofficially, our ed fund balance for FY17. Okay. So, so you can, you can scroll down, but if you look at it, yeah, right yeah. up there. The, 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 the number in the upper left hand corner, yeah. forty thousand dollar negative. Oh. You really, you really can't be negative, so you have to fix it. Yeah, you can't, you can't be negative ending a fiscal year. Mm -hmm. And one way would be to possibly fix it, reclassify, legitimately reclassify possibly some operating expenditures as. Uh, the operational maintenance fund as possibly and or vice versa yeah, you might be able to do or, or, or transfer some funds yeah but so we transfer in between or, or rename the category yeah possibly we'll have to look at it but but that's something we'll start Dave and I will and Brittany the three of us will you know delve into it too early fig figure out how to close the year but that's yeah. still we have to see some numbers yeah. it's, it's July yeah, July 10th, 10th. They're still with the holiday last week. They're still doing entries and finding things and, and, and getting things in order. We'll probably be looking at firmer numbers in, in another week, week and a half, and then hmm. we'll look at it. Plus, when they say tentative budget, it's not that like we're tentative. We don't know what, what we're doing. It's actually the legal term that the state says we have to do. You have to do a tentative budget first. And that's the term that they use. And we call it that, and then you know that has to be on public display. That's why we're doing this now, so we can do be on public display tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning. We put in, in the the law requires it had to be placed in the paper saying that the tentative budgets for public display, so the public can scrutinize it. And we also set the date for the hearing in the ad. Possibly. Yes, so, it'll, yeah. So we set the date for the hearing. So that's all been published, which is sometime in September, probably the September board. December September, September board, board meeting. meeting. So that's yeah. all in the paper. So. This just starts the formal process going as far as is, is getting the budget done. And I've always said that you know, even though the state calls it tentative, that's that's actually that is a good term because that's the state we're in. Mm -hmm. Still trying to figure out what kind of money we're going to get. Still ironing out some expenditures and things like that. So, okay. And the board has 100% latitude to make changes between the tentative and the final. At the beginning of this document. Is there a checkbox and modified accrual? No, it's actually cash. 
So the budget is reported in this form in cash basis? Yes. Okay. Yes. This is just the, the summary sheet. This isn't the whole budget document. So, And with the um, fund balances, if I just pulled the report, the ending fund balance report for FY17, and this is these were the numbers. Like I said, they're all tentative, though, because it hasn't been closed out. So there will be transfers, and then once it's official, we'll update the document. So it will look completely different when you see it again in September. That's Any other questions? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And kind of the same thing for CDS, we have to have their budget on display as well with ours. Um, they provided us a document that gives us some of their tentative numbers and I did speak with Carol and she said, um, you know, it's gonna be very similar to last year's budget. So she provided this document which basically breaks down their accounts and gives their totals. Um, she didn't have it in the, in the state form yet. So are there any questions on this? No? Uh, the next one was our busing contract renewal. We are recommending a, a one-year extension with Illinois School Bus and Alpha School Bus. The Alpha School Bus uh, recommendation, the proposal came in at 6.5%. This is due to a couple of different factors. For one, a lot of our programs have changed their start times and their bell times. This means that we can't pair the routes like we used to. There's not as much pairing that can be done between programs and picking up students along the way. That doesn't really work with all the change in the bell, in the bell times that have occurred. Um, there was also an increase in minimum wage, so they pr proposed this. They actually proposed 13%, but we negotiated it out to be 6.5% this year and 6.5% next year, which will be at the next finance meeting or next, so we don't have to bid out the transportation. And um, you know, we've used Illinois School Bus and Alpha for a long time, so this is the proposals that we came up with. As far, I, I'm, I finally thought I was keeping them. I just was out of curiosity if, you know, have we gotten a lot of complaints about the bus service or concerns from parents? You know, I've been hearing that, you know, the students are not getting picked up or they're getting picked up really late, you know, and I just wasn't sure if those were just one-off scenarios of this bus service is, you know, their service is comparable to other competitors. You know, have we done anything or anything like that? From, from my experience, all those school buses absolutely outstanding. Okay. Solid. As long as they know, is if somebody's late and they're talking to their associate principal, the associate principal will make phone calls. They adjust routes for the first month. Or right. So as long as, as long as somebody's communicating with us. So if you're hearing complaints, have them talk to the associate at the building, mm -hmm. and, and those should be fixed. Alpha is um, uh, a subsidiary of. Illinois School Bus that deals with the special ed program mm -hmm. and the, the struggles we have with them things are so fluid with those programs mm -hmm. it's a it's a much greater challenge and uh, the other piece with Alpha is most of their drivers once they get established move to Illinois okay. for the, the bigger regular routes I don't know if it's um, fees or um, salaries or what the difference is but Alpha Alpha does struggle, but it, it's a much more difficult uh, situation. So. Okay. Thank you. Then mm -hmm. the copy of the um, proposals were attached. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see the differences in the prices. The next one was our Sodexo contract renewal. Mm -hmm. We are recommending a three-year extension with Sodexo. And one of the reasons for this is that they're offering to purchase new refrigerators for Bremen, Tinley, and Hillcrest. The refrigerators that are currently in the buildings, they mentioned to us are not, they're not, um, like up to standards really, and they said that they were in need of replacement and upgrades. So they offered to purchase the refrigerators for us, and then at the end of our three-year contract, we would own them. So that kind of works in nicely with our um, capital plan to redo the cafeterias. 
and the rest of the contract remains the same. Yeah. 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 All the other incentives oh, remain okay. with the addition mm -hmm. of the uh, refrigerator. What about the, the food that they're providing? Are they, they're, we still use their, mm -hmm. uh, all food their food services mm -hmm. and everything. What about the food that they're providing? Because I, I know some of the students were concerned about. Uh, is it staying the same or are we changing it? Or the, the food staying the same. There was some same. issues with some staff and preparation that we've had some discussions with them that they're going to deal with before the start of the school year. Mm -hmm. um, but from my understanding, they're, they're about as good as anybody. They're going to do a um, another student session where they talk and get feedback from the oh, students. And good. They were talking about doing something with cameras. Yeah, they're having this, they're picking a group of students to basically go around to all the cafeterias, take pictures of the things they love and the things that they could do without, and then they're kind of doing a little focus group for that. So they're really involving the students so, on so the those food. students will represent the entire mm -hmm. student body. Good. Um, okay. Every time I've dealt with Sodexo's management, they're, they're real receptive mm -hmm. and flexible. Beth. Beth. Beth Penn. Beth. Is that Penn. Yeah, she's our main contact Beth. with them. Oh, wait a minute. She's a tall lady? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, tall yeah. lady. So she's nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's very she's nice, nice, yeah. And, and they, they're real responsive to any problems that we have. If we, yeah. Again, if we know that there's an issue, they will deal with it mm -hmm. right away. Yeah, they're, they're very responsive, so mm -hmm. we're pretty happy with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many refrigerators in each school are they replacing? More than one? Because I would, there's got to be more than one refrigerator in each campus. They're replacing the big freezer. The the big the big 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 yeah. About 10,000 yeah. per building. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they they said that they would to, to not exceed $30,000, so they're going to spend about ten grand a fridge. And Oak Forest is a new situation, so there was no need at all. Yeah. But all of the other three schools. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thirty thousand dollars. In addition to the the other incentives they give us. Yeah, we get a seventy-seven thousand dollar guarantee, and then we also get a, a six thousand dollar rent check because they um, coordinate their four storage program from our school as well. Oh, okay. So we get a decent amount of money from those checks as well. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> Right. Copy of the contract. The next one we had was the U.S. Security Associates contract renewal. Um, we actually have not had an increase with them for quite a while. So they, um, they originally wanted 3%, but we settled at a 1% increase on the contract. And with a portion of the 1% to go to the officers. Yeah. Oh. So the officers haven't had a raise. Oh, that's right. So they're getting a half a percent, we, something. Mm -hmm. You know, again, we could absorb more of the cost if we wanted our officers to get paid more. But mm -hmm. um, so it's the best we could do. Um, when you say officers, these are officers who are on when they're not on duty, they're here. Or this is like no. a psychic. This is them? security no. guys. No, this is security. This is not police. Oh, okay. We call them security officers. Okay. They're Okay. People you see at the door when you come in, mm -hmm. those guys are okay. checking your ID and stuff. Okay, so the, those guys at the door that check in ID are the U.S. Mm -hmm. security. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. um, we had some conversations about them, about training. They have some new leadership. Uh, I requested that the security people wear polo shirts instead of quasi-police uniforms and have a softer, friendlier approach to them. So we're going to work with them and do some training and see if we can get them to, yeah, just be a little bit more friendly and supportive as opposed to elevating no, <laughs> students' okay. blood pressure. We want to mm -hmm. calm down. Are they the ones that were checking the hats in the book? Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Hats people. Yeah. And they did say um, with their new, we do have a new account rep who came and met with us, and they have a new, basically, manager for all of our schools, too. And they did say that they are planning on starting these programs and, you know, getting to be more active within the school, basically. And I think I was clear with them that they're on probation for a year. We want good, friendly service. They're on probation for a year? My probation. 
Yeah, <laughs> 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 Dr. Kendall probate. I don't know if that's a thing, but I made it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. We'll go with that. We understand. <laughs> well, and we had some situations where they weren't supplying officers, and um, we had other officers that were spending overtime, and there was some mm -hmm. leadership issues in the organization that they claimed they were going to fix, so we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Good the next one was the Martin Whalen contractor rule. Currently, our, our current contract in place, we're spending $12,720.68 a month. And our new contract, we have negotiated to $10,761.29 a month. So mm -hmm. yearly, we're saving about $23,512. Um, we're also replacing all of our eight copier machines. The D95s are now going to be D110 machines. So we're getting all brand new machines that mm. we're leasing. And we're Our also, yeah. Like so that. we actually own 24 Xerox, smaller Xerox units within schools. So they are also providing the service and supply for all of those and our print managed, managed print services as well. So they knocked the price down quite a bit and wound and, up saving us. Oh yes, they they are forgiving the rest of our contract and starting new um, with our new contract. So we won't. Yeah. So we told them basically that the machines were old and you know needed some serious upgrades and repairs, and um, this is what they proposed. So it wound up being great to get all new machines and printers, and um, wound up saving us. You know, they're like. Obviously, newsletters that go home to families, and that we print, you know, things like that. What else are we primarily using printers and Xerox machines for? Worksheets. Well, you guys started These using the industry managers. Admin, yeah. and so the, uh, and the there's, there's, two, there's, two, there's two big two printers, the like two big D95 machines uh, in every school. The so sheets, we the have eight you on these right now, and uh, we're going to get all new ones in schools. For so customer, each of those you know, will be replaced with an test. Well, now teachers print out their own scantron sheets. Okay. Through the so that, that, was a I mean, that actually that's increases a lot of paper because you used to buy you know that didn't run through the, the copier machines you used to buy the pre you know the forms now I'm pretty sure I'm right right with yeah. mastery management yeah. you all yeah, did yeah you're right and yeah. Mm -hmm. that was a big issue for us at 232 and it did yeah. increase the amount of printing that was going through copiers mm -hmm. and it made copiers even to be more have to be more reliable because they're trying to get their tests printed right. out right. and if, if they can't get their tests printed out mm -hmm. then then it's yeah, as compared to a worksheet, a worksheet somehow you can't get your worksheet out. Teachers can kind of maybe you know uh, work around that, but you can't work around not having your your test forms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We and we struggled. There was a lot of frustration last year with the copiers. That's why we pursued a, a new system. So, um, is that like an issue with the paper count? I don't know how we do it at the high schools. So or do we have a certain amount of paper? Count that our copies that the teachers use through a login, or how we do that. We do not. So they can copy as many as they need to. Okay. And we did say that we do want to start making more um, frequent kind of paper audit, see how much we're actually using, because we did realize like we probably should have been owed some credits because we were paying for paper that we weren't using. So we have talked with them and told them we would like to start making more frequent paper audits, like keep track of it a little bit more and make sure that we're not paying for paper that we're not using or prints that we're not using. So how is that going to work? Uh, they will do a login in? They will, all the teachers do have to use their ID to log in. Okay. And um, so they do keep track of how many how many copies they're making and they can go through the, each machine and pull how many pages have been printed on it so they're just going to keep track of that i think right now we're at 14 5 million right yeah so we're right around there i think the contract well the, the new the new contract is going to have that if we're under yeah. the annual allowance we'll get credits if right. we're over mm. the contract current contract if we're over we're charged 
three tenths of a pen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three yeah. point zero zero three. Yeah, point so zero zero three. Three tenths of one penny yeah. per That's per amazing. image. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's three, and then uh, so they have the mm -hmm. plus plus we, they do have you, you you all run the software too even if it's printed to copiers you know who's sending jobs to the copier from your computer mm -hmm. they call I've got a quick tracker. Something was said. Uh, my first day on a job, I got involved with copiers <laughs> lab. So uh, Equitrack. 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 So they, from their computers, they send jobs and, oh, and sure. things like that. So, yeah, my first day was last weekend. It was a copier day. Steve Both said, two, co two copier companies were coming Steve in. Steve said hi, we said here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we were, we were hang, uh, Brittany and I were haggling over pricing <laughs> there and stuff. Yeah, I'm kind of. But it does wind up being a, a really significant yeah. savings for us. So we think this is the best way to go. Okay. Okay. So um, one more question. I'm sorry. Yeah. The HP fleet is okay? Yes. Yeah. We're not replacing any of the HP fleet, but they are still providing all of the toner and supply and service for it. So we're not replacing any. Um, I know it was kind of Jim Donato's thing to get them all out as soon as possible they didn't you know and then we uh, we do have an issue with sometimes the teachers they'll print huge amounts of paper through it so that's causing more needs to have it serviced and stuff like that so that was kind of let's try and start using make sure we're using the big copiers um, so we're not going to replace those right now but they do still provide all of the the toner and the supplies for it that's working okay so far mm -hmm. okay. Um, the, the next one was the boys lacrosse sports edition. Um, Hillcrest High School currently does not have girls soccer in the spring like all the other schools. So we are um, talking about having them host the boys lacrosse team. Mm -hmm. that's, um, a, that's a district team. I was going to say, yeah. Mm -hmm. for all schools. It's not yeah. four teams. It's okay. one, one program, two levels mm -hmm. for the district core. So it just winds up working out that the the field space is free and um, what name will they play under? That's a good question. Um, How do they do that with the swim team? Because that don't look yeah, the swim team. The swim team is. Called. I'm trying to think of their name. They they currently they're the Fury, the lacrosse team. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a problem with them keeping, keeping that name. Hmm. Fury. The Fury. Yeah. And only boys. Doesn't seem like we have a girl's no, interest yet. Boys. We'll see how time goes. Yeah. Is, is it made in an IHSA sport yet? Yeah. It is an IHSA yeah. sport now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we we had a co-op team that functioned in the emerging sports league that yeah. was kind of separate from us, but they will not be able to exist. Did it happen just the last year or two? Last, or? Yeah, this will be the first. This will be the first year. First school yeah, year with it. So it's either you eliminate it completely or you add it at this point. I think you needed like 68 teams Maybe to get was 61 or something. I don't know. Some, so you need a certain amount. We're just when I left District 2 Theory, we're just below the threshold of the number of teams you needed to make it an IHSA mm -hmm. sport. So obviously, we must have gone over that. Right. Now it's now it's an so IHSA the next, sport. The next page has the the budgets. <coughs> So we do have it broken down by one-time startup fees and, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> we have it broken down by one-time startup fees and annual fees. <coughs> so is that now gonna be a Bremen program or is it still like a club? It's still a club. Well, uh, run by outside organization. No, it's going to be our program. It is going to be program. Was it previously just a? It outside? Was, a, was an outside okay. club. Yeah, we were absorbing it, so we have to talk to the union about uh, uh, stipend. We just picked one that we thought was comparable, um, so we have to post it as our our coaching position. I don't know if there's anybody qualified. If not, then we'll go the ASAP route. But it'll be run under our organization. But it doesn't run till spring, so we've got time. We have some time, right. Any questions on the fees? Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. So last month, last month. we <laughs> added boys volleyball at Bremen and Tinley. That one I didn't bring to you because the sport already existed, so it was mm -hmm. more of a staffing issue. This one 
first time we're having this sport, so I would ask that you would approve this sport. And our last one is the uh, FY18 rates of pay. Um, our school police officer pay, so the actual policemen that work in our in our buildings, they have not had an increase in their pay since 2009. Mm -hmm. So. Um, this year we included a two dollar and twelve cent raise, which puts them at twenty five fifty. They were currently at two dollars and thirty eight cents. So this puts them at in even twenty five. At twenty two dollars and thirty eight cents. We were paying the yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. The difference. I'm sorry. Three six. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm Can we get somebody? <laughs> <laughs> um, the other increase that we included was a 50 cent increase to the student worker pay, which we put, which puts them at minimum wage. Um, we do have some students that are 18 years old, so you know if they wanted to, they could probably say something that we're not even paying the minimum wage. That so we did. Not at minimum wage. Yeah, but that's another story. <laughs> so we did include that in. Um, in our rates of pay, and this was a lot of those other ones are contract. Yeah, if they have stars specific. next to them, they're they're determined by the contract. The other inclusion on there that's different from last year is the skilled maintenance that we talked about uh, last month, uh, trying to give our guys some help at twenty five dollars an hour as opposed to the $10 for custodial. Uh, we, we've only had one person think about applying so far. It's been posted for a couple of days. You know companies. Mm -hmm. Hot dog. Mm -hmm. Make some extra money. <laughs> 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 you work during the day, just you come yeah. over and do Sorry, a spring musical. Do a spring musical. <laughs> Dave, you forgot about the budget. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and just for, I, mean, I know there's Minimum wage in Cook County is ten dollars. Will right. the students be? I I called Bill about this because I know it went to ten dollars July first, but he says that we are not subject to that. The school code excludes us. But will the students know that? Because I've had when I was at the <coughs> park district, I've had people come back to me because the parents know. They're like, wait a minute, what is this? You're jipping my to kid. To my knowledge, you know? we have not had, and we don't have a lot of student workers. Um, we may be considering you using them a little bit more. Um, mm. There was a long issue on union versus student uh, that seems to have died down, but it, it's possible, but I've not heard any complaints. Um, we were we were legal, but I don't know if we were appropriate at the $7.50, so the state minimum wage is the eight fifty. dollars okay. so we'll stay there. I, I don't see it to be an issue. What are students doing that were well, like what kind of job goes A lot through? of stuff in the pool, um, the lifeguards. Uh, okay. There's some other things that we have ideas for using, possibly. We just haven't organized that yet. Isn't there a minimum number of hours before you get access to minimum wage? Mm -hmm. I mean, even in Cook County. Uh, all I can tell you is, as I said to Steve this morning, I used to work at the Park District, and I know they are paying their 16 year old camp counselors $10 an hour. Starting. Probably their choice. <coughs> I don't think it's. I don't think it's a man, mandate if you, if a student is working only a, a very small number of hours. Per week. Not. I I was executive director there for twenty years, and that okay. was never the case. That's, not That's the all case. I can tell. Okay, you. But, I'm, I'm yeah. but it is in school. But it is in the school code. <laughs> different. The school code is different than. Mm -hmm. um, Park district Park code, code or, or, or the state. Or the okay, yeah. All right. yeah. Different set of rules. Right. Yeah. Well, that was it. it. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. Okay. Good job. Good job. You guys are awful nice to run her first show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I haven't been sleeping very well. <laughs> she was here on the Fourth of July. I, I know when I got the Friday. When I got the email oh, wow. Friday night, mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, yeah. guess we are here." Wow. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of work went into this. Yeah.
So now you can have a lot of fun these next few days. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's right back. <laughs> anyway. right back to work, yeah. so back to work. don't celebrate too often. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn. Um, uh, we're just adjourned. Yeah, 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. 7.30